Okay, let's get started. So, welcome everybody, thank you very much for dropping by. So, I am Thomas, I am one of the developers of Scotchbringer. You may know me by my nickname, Mr. Helmut, on the social webs and on Discord. Um, so, this is an Ask Me Anything session. So, I am also going to show the game, so uh, the newest stuff that we've been working on lately and part of the stuff that we are going to put into the full release of the game. Um, so ask me anything question, drop all the questions that you have, I'm going to go through all of them. I believe that you have also many questions regarding the upcoming release, like dates and platforms and so on. Uh, there are some questions I am not com going to be able to answer right away, but I hope I am, I am going to be able to answer most of them and get in real answers and so on. Um, I intend to do this uh, stream in both English and French. So, bonjour tout le monde. Um, S'il y a des gens qui sont français, qui ne comprennent que le français, uh, je suis enclin à bien sûr vous répondre. Et uh, donc, si vous avez des questions, je sauterai d'anglais à français et uh, j'essaierai de traduire. So, uh, I just said that uh, if people had question in French, I am going to jump back and forth into French and English, and I'm going to translate each of questions because we have, since we are French, we are French developers. We have uh, French-speaking people into our community. Into our community, sorry. Um, so let's start with questions. So I'm going to go back through the chat, and I'm going to go through every question that I've already encountered, and. Uh, so, yeah, very excited about the news, game, great questions. Okay, first questions and right away is a good one from Roello. Uh, hello, have you, really, have you a release date for the Switch version of the game, please? Um, the answer is that yes, we have a release date. <laughs> and I hope that this is the right answer for you. Um, yeah, the truth is, is that yes, we have really a set release date. Um, the game is going to be releasing on PC, um, on Nintendo Switch, and on Xbox One at the same time, fairly soon. Uh, I can't uh, reveal the date, because um, the date is going in itself be announced very soon during this Gamescom. So uh, I can't tell you much about it, but I can invite you to uh, stay tuned for everything that comes from IGN. And so you may have this kind of real answer, but it's going to drop very, very soon. I mean, the release date, the, the game is still a few weeks away. So yeah. Uh, okay, go down through more questions. Interpretive tracking was asking, in regards to Blast 32, are there any plans to add weapon attachments that modify how the weapons fire and apply damages? For instance, long barrels could, could, could tighten the spread of the shotgun or extended magazines. Um, the answer to this is absolutely yes, and I'm going to be showing you that uh, after I answered a few more questions. And I believe that you are going to be pleased about this because we really fully revamped the weapon system. So there is now attachments, you can like drop mods and put them into your, onto your guns and many other new stuff coming to the gun system and uh, I'm going to show that right away so I'm uh, sorry if I don't get into specific answers right away regarding this because I'm going to show it to you and okay hello hello lots of hellos okay but noses was asking please make easy to use your uh, resolution mode for CRT users. Your game looks amazing on CRT at pixel art resolution with scan lights. Uh, I am not sure about your request because I do believe that the game already uh, renders well 
on CRT monitors. And if you have more uh, precision into uh, your commands, I'd be very glad to answer. But I do believe that the game already fits quite okay into uh, that kind of space. Any questions? Also, do you take some inspiration from Hyperlight Drifter? So, still a question from Buttnody. But does it. Uh, sorry if I don't pronounce your name correctly. But knows? But no Z? Okay, <laughs> because there is two E at the end, so I don't know. Uh, so, uh, also, did you take some inspiration from Hyperlight Drifter? The tight controls plus combat, incredible pixel art, and game lore in both games add so much to the experience. So, I know there is a lot of people who ask us if we played Hyperlight Drifters, uh, most notably because the game has purple in it and because there are rumbuses because it seems that this is something that Hyperlight Drifter brings into the <laughs> game sphere. And um, in fact, uh, there is a quite shocking answer to this, is that we actually never played Hyperlight Drifter. And we know that we should, because I, every time we say that, there is a lot of people who come to say to us, like, you should play Hyperlight Drifter, because it is a really cool game. And uh, and yeah, but I have to concede uh, this scene that is that we <laughs> never played I played Drifter and yeah, pretty shocking, yeah. Uh, do you have plans after 1.0 from Swordrazi? Uh, we do have. Um, I we don't have yet things. Um, really clear things I can share. We don't have like a roadmap. We have like a bunch of ideas and stuff that we would like to put into the game as post-release content. And I could give you a list of things uh, we are interested in, which doesn't mean that it is going to be a, a real roadmap of things that we are going to publish, but at least it is the kind of ideas that we have and that we want to put into practice. But all of this is going to be uh, conditioned, uh, conditioned, conditioned, uh, sorry, how to pronounce this stuff. <laughs> but all of this is going to depend on the actual release of the game. I mean, you know, we are indie developers. We all dream that our game is going to perform well and we have like super plans into uh, making like very extensive support of the game but it's also a reality is that it depends on the success of the game uh, so far the game is doing well so we have like a good face into the fact that we are going to be able to at least unroll a few updates post launch of contents and tweaks so the, I the kind of idea that we have that will not ship into the 1.0 but that we would like to still put into the game in the future um, so on my list there is like a menu for achievements uh, because when you play on PC or when you play on Xbox or on PlayStation you already have like your achievement or trophy list uh, directly built in into your the platform but for other platforms like the Nintendo Switch you don't have like an achievement system but we still would like to kind of propose some way these achievements to switch players and we are most likely going to try to put a menu into the game into the nexus computer that is into uh, next to the shimming tree in directly into the game and put a new menu there where you will be able like to browse your achievements and get to see what's going on so this is got, not going to be like on the 1.0 version of the game, but we still would like to try to put that in the future into the Switch version of the game. So just so like the Switch player have the exact same experience from all the other platforms. Um, we eventually would like to add a boss rush mod. Uh, we already have like lots of crazy ID into uh, how we can integrate new mods into the game and we have like ideas of very crazy mods that goes way way behind uh, boss ref mod um, into the next use computer by the shimming tree we also would like to add a stats screen 
the game is already recording your stat records. Uh, the game already knows what is your playtime, the number of room visited, the number of damage dealt, of enemies beaten, of uh, bosses fought, and all sorts of things. So the game already knows. The game already tracks your data. Your data. So if you play now, the game already have all of that in store and but we didn't add the time to actually make this screen of like recapping your adventure so this is something that we've planned um, another thing that we want to work on and that we can't for now because we don't have the time to is like we would like to add multiple save slots so if you already played the game you know that for now there is only one single save slot and we know that some player would like to have multiple of them or at least like people who are speed running the game they would like to be able to keep their own save for for them and have a clean save every time to like retry speed running and so on so there is of course there is use for it um we'd like to add seeded runs like being able to get a seed from a game so a seed is like a number that if you share it with a friend he's going to have the exact same game as you uh he's going to have the same rooms the enemies are going to be placed in the same patterns and so on and so this is what we call a seeded run this is some things like like roguelike player should be used to here and um, so we already have like this basic setup of seeded runs into the game right now but we don't have the time to actually put together a menu and something to able to input the code and so on so right now it's still kind of complicated to do that so this is something that we, we are not going to be able to uh, to do for the final release but we are going to try to put that into the future and um, yeah we have more game modes like a loop mode that we would like to put into the game uh, and uh, an adventure mode which is a very big mode that we'd like to try but it's still kind of a rough idea i can't say much about it and of course a lot of new enemies um, when we started to work on scourgeburger we wanted to try to make multiple bosses per world like to avoid too, many, too much repetitivity, we wanted to try to, uh, like, if you play two times the same world, you're going to have, like, a different boss, uh, just for you to experience something else. So we didn't have the time to put this many boss into the game, because making a boss takes a lot of time. For instance, uh, just to give you an idea of how much time designing one single boss takes, it's about three weeks from start to finish. There is about one week of design, there is about one week of production, and about one week of tweaking and testing and finishing it up. And so if you just go into the number of bosses that you want to put into the game, you multiply that by three weeks and you're going to have the world time that you need to actually making this. So it's a lot of time. Um, and of course you have also many other ID, but I'm going to try to go back to questions. Uh, okay, where am I? And Microfoman, sorry I don't have a question, but I joined Slant to love the game. Cool. <laughs> You're still very welcome, and I hope you still enjoy your stay. Um, that's going hi, 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 hi. So sorry if I, if I can't like say hi individually to everybody, but you're still all very cool and welcome. Uh, Kiro Gami asking in your head what does the finished product version of Scourgebanger look like? Uh, it's pretty close to what the game is right now. I mean internally because uh, since the last update of the game we made a lot of progress. There is a lot of new stuff that we added. There is a new world that we haven't showed any of it yet. Uh, there is two new big bosses, there is a full revamp of the weapon system, there is secret rooms, there is new shops, there is new NPCs, there is a revamp of the story, uh, there is the endings of the game, and uh, and yes, Kurtzbanger is, we are quite 
oh, glad with what we did with the game and what we are still going to be able to do until the full release. Um, the only thing that from a personal standpoint is that we haven't been able to put this many bosses into the game, but that's that, that would have been totally insane. I mean, we really don't have the time to do that. We just uh, we just were uh, we, we scoped the game too big, so uh, we had to cut this down. But I believe the the finished product is going to be pretty cool, pretty close. Sorry, to uh, the intended initial vision that we had from the game. Uh, it's pretty much it, and this is cool. This is really cool. I mean. This is the game that we wanted to make, and uh, I believe that we are going to uh, be able to uh, fulfill at least our own expectation of the game, and we hope also yours. Uh, are you excited for the IGN live stream? Yes, I am. So, um, if you go on the IGN website, uh, you're going to see a schedule. So, IGN is going to stream every day up to Sunday, I believe, or, or Saturday. And um, there is a Scourge Bingo slot, it is on Saturday. And and yeah, there is going to be new stuff there. There is going to be stuff that you've never seen and, uh, and stuff that I'm not going to show you today because I'm not allowed to, because <laughs> it's always going to happen on Saturday. And, uh, and and if you followed the previous questions, you know that there is going to be stuff like the release date to be involved. So <laughs> I invite you to stay tuned uh, for everything that Asian has, has planned. Uh, a question from Leon Gazier. Um Hey. Love the game, is the combat music inspired by Doom? Uh, I get really strong vibe from it and it's great. Um, I can't fully answer for Yunas because you, you know Yunas Turner is the game composer and sound designer on the game. And um, so in the game we have like dynamic music. So you have like chill music when you are adventuring, exploring, and when you start into a fight, the music gets more excited. And um, I don't think he got inspired by Doom, but uh, he sure is uh, a fan of the composer. And uh, he got more inspired by some of of his own vibes and from other bands of music, like Meshuga, if you know. Uh, I believe that's a name that he, he brings up quite often when we talk about uh, his music. And, uh, but it's not specifically Doom, but uh, it's true that we have some kind of the same feeling because it's an action game and it's really fast paced and uh, you also smash things a lot. And uh, I, I should replay Doom, very cool game. I haven't finished the second one, but I should. And has the official release date been confirmed yet? No, it's not been confirmed yet. It's going to be confirmed very soon. So. Stay tuned for anything that AGN uh, has to announce. Uh, so, Let TV. Hello, Mr. Remold. Really nice info. Uh, so, it's a question in French, so I'm going to switch back and forth and translate it. J'ai quelques questions sur la difficulté du jeu. C'est peut-être moi, mais je le trouve assez facile. Est-ce qu'il y aura de la difficulté dans le futur Alors, euh, question difficulté. Nous, on a vu que les joueurs, on a à peu près 5% des joueurs qui ont beaucoup de mal avec le jeu, qui le trouvent très dur. On a 90% des joueurs qui le trouvent, ça va. Et 5% des joueurs qui le trouvent très facile et qui roulent dessus. Donc, euh, félicitations, tu es dans le top. Et, euh, et la question est oui, euh, est-ce qu'on a des chouettes difficultés Donc, on a un mode difficile que je vais montrer après en stream, euh, qui rajoute beaucoup de trucs euh, en termes de difficultés. Donc euh, on, va, on a rajouté un bon gros challenge pour les 5% qui veulent vraiment en avoir. Et pour les gens qui trouvent le jeu encore trop dur, euh, on essaie d'assouplir aussi le début du jeu. Pour, euh, pour que le début et l'apprentissage soient euh, plus souples. So, the question from, from LED TV was about the game difficulty. Uh, here she is saying that uh, the game is too simple and that uh, is building the game 
very easily. And what I've said is that we have uh, an old bunch of game analytics, so we really know where players are struggling or not. And um, and the thing is that there is about 5% of players who struggles a lot and about 90% of players who are just fine, they are like in the zone and there is 5 other percent of players who are like wrecking the game and finishing it in maybe even less than 20 minutes, so that's the thing. And. Um, and the question was, will there be more difficulty options in the future? And the answer is definitely yes, and I'm going to show that in stream in a few minutes. And um, we added a, a, a dedicated mod to like the post game. Like if you beat the game, you're going to have like a big new chunk of the game with many challenges and a new world and uh, a lot of stuff and I'm going to show that and it's going to be cool and for the players who are struggling who, who believe that the game is way too difficult because there are players who are really struggling with the game and uh, we are not like trying to overlook this so this is also important for us to have a smooth experience for everybody and so what we are also trying to do is to smooth out the difficulty curve, curve when you start playing the game so that you get a better hang into the game also trying to maybe try to uh, like enhance the tutorials and so on and so we'll check that um, so yeah I've missed a lot of people <laughs> coming in drop by so uh, a lot of people I know cool yeah um, put 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 Okay, so but knows precising the game does work on CRTN looks fantastic, but the last time I tried due to the UI was not displayed properly. It also required a very high refresh rate on set on Windows to work for some reason. Okay, so yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to click on your screenshots. And okay, yeah. So what I believe would be welcome is maybe a setting to configure what we call the safe border of your TV. But um, this is unfortunately something that is not going to ship into the final game, but is the kind of option that we could be adding into the future. Um, so hello, oh cool, lots of cool of cool faces. Coucou Kowab, bonjour uh, Yeldedbout, je sais jamais comment prononcer ton prochain ton nom, je suis désolé. Mais c'est cool, c'est des, des gens, des, des, des non connus, c'est sympa de passer. Uh, Saltmeister, hey, sup Helmet. Ok, bro hello, new question maybe a physical release on switch on cartridge as neurovoider um ah, it's a touchy question <laughs> because i would like to answer but i'm not sure if i'm allowed to so read between the lines <laughs> um are you on the epic game store uh, and if so What's the most worth to buy for you? Um, so right now the game is not on the Epic Game Store. I'm not sure if, if I'm either allowed to uh, answer any questions. So <laughs> then again, <laughs> please read between the lines. And uh, what's the most worth to buy for you? Uh, it's a good question. The answer to this is that what matters for us is that the platform you get the game from is a platform that you like you. Uh, it's very cool from you to uh, ask developers and also to be willing to support developers and so on. But uh, the, the truth is that uh, even though it's very super kind from you to, uh, to come asking, uh, there is no like relevant differences and uh, so what us as developer prefer is that you make yourself comfortable 
So just get the game on your preferred platform. So if it's if it's available there, and uh, yeah, just <laughs> enjoy. And uh, just don't get the game from G2A <laughs> because G2A is ripping developer off. And uh, if you buy our game there, we don't get anything. And uh, okay, let's move on with the question. Thanks for the long answer. Yeah, it was a really long answer. Yeah, sorry. Um, it's been amazing to experience the game as it continues to go cool. Hello, Rafa man. Okay, I'm not sure if I can pronounce your name. Irad Dragon. I hope I get it right. Uh, are you going to buff some blessings because there are people that stay, say some, some blood blessings are much better than others? Um, yeah, there, of course, there are blood blessings that are better than others. Um, the thing is that when you play your roguelike game, you don't really would like everything to be perfectly balanced. Because if everything was perfectly balanced, every run would be the same. And where's the salt <laughs> if everything is balanced? <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah, we, we know that some some of them are pretty useless, some of them are really OP and we are balancing stuff, we are going to balance stuff, we are also going to add uh, lots of new blessings into the game so there is going to be a lot to experience and maybe less less, loose, less useful stuff um, so that was the another question what is the best decision to use your own engine? Oh, this is a very big question because um, I would like to take a lot of time to re to answer this question, and, and if and if and, uh, and if you feel like it, I'm going to uh, uh, go more in depth on the Discord, and uh, because I have like a lot of stuff to say about this. But the very short, short, short answer would be go with an engine or a framework that you are comfortable with. Uh, don't try to follow a trend or don't try to chase rainbows uh, into finding the perfect tech for your game. Uh, just choose something that resonates with you and something that you are going to be able to use pretty easily and conveniently. And that's it. <laughs> Nothing more. Um, Gragada, is there any API mod schedule? And you know why. Okay, <laughs> I guess I know why. Uh, because Gragada is someone who loves making Twitch mods into games. And uh, the thing is that if we have the time, we would like to make an official Twitch mod. Um, we don't know if we are going to have that, that time, but I'm going to try. I already have it planned and uh, I don't know if I'm going to have the time but for a real mod API uh, I don't know because to be very honest with you I've never done this uh, I've already used a mod API from other games but to be frank I've never experienced making one myself for my own game uh, what I can tell is that we have a bunch of tools and I, I could be showing you that but I have the game running right now but um, we have a bunch of tools for making the games that we made ourselves like for making the bosses for making the levels and lots of crazy stuff and um, and uh, and maybe one day it could be possible that we publish those tools so this is not set in stone because there is still a lot of work to make them like public ready but it is in it is a possibility um, another question have you planned to release a collector edition with proto editors as of Neurovoider and something for alpha testers um, yes and no so the yes is that uh, yes there is going to be a collector version of the game um, there is going to be, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to, to say it just yet, but there is going to be a comics 
that is currently being produced by a very talented uh, illustrator. And there is going to be, uh, of course, the soundtrack of the game, which is by now finished. Uh, it still has to go into the final mastering to make it just right. And when the mastering is going to be done, the soundtrack will be ready. And you are going to be able to get the soundtrack separately from the game. And as of a collector, like putting prototype and so on, because in our previous game, Neurovoider, we added game prototype from all the previous version of the game into a collector separate stuff. And uh, this is something that we also would like to do at some point. Uh, it is not going to ship directly into the 1.0 of the game, but if we ever do something like this, uh, we are going to add it into the intended collector edition of the game. So, which means that if, for instance, if you get the collector edition on Steam, and the bo these bonus are not yet in it when you buy it, that's not an issue because once it's going to be out, they are going to add up automatically to what you already bought. So it's it's a safe safe play. And yeah, Meshuga, yeah. And let's move on. Is post game much harder than every other part of the game? Oh yes. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Salut Dark Wolfy, petit coucou. Non, merci, c'est sympa. Um, question in French from Kyokai. Ou Kyokai, pardon. Uh, tu peux répondre pour la sortie sur Switch, ça a été annoncé officiellement sur la Conf Actu Gaming de hier, non Alors, ça a été déjà annoncé que le jeu sort sur Switch, donc oui, le jeu sort sur Switch. Uh, on peut aussi confirmer que normalement le jeu sort sur Switch exactement en même temps que la version finale Steam et que la version finale Xbox One. Et euh, tout ce qu'on peut pas dire pour l'instant, c'est la date exacte. Alors, on l'a, elle existe, c'est dans bientôt. Mais euh, on ne peut pas encore en parler parce que euh, c'est IGN qui va en parler et ça sera samedi. Voilà. So, uh, yeah, oh, yet another question about the Switch version because Kyokai told that the Switch version got announced yesterday and another conferences. Um, and the thing is that the Switch version was already a thing. It's already official. So uh, it's official that the game is coming to the Switch. And what we are scheduling is that the game releases everywhere at the same time. So everywhere means announced platforms, which are Nintendo Switch, PC and Xbox One. And Xbox One also means uh, Xbox Game Pass. And um, so these are the platforms that are going to be like launching at the same time. So there is going to be maybe one day of difference between them, but uh, overall it's going to be the same deal. And uh, the game is going to release on other platforms, but later. And uh, I can't say which one yet, but we are already working on ports and so on. Yeah, it's a bit early to talk about the Epic Game Store. <laughs> uh, will there be any different types of damage, like damage over time or debuff to apply temporarily? In the base state pit, the enemies reside in toxic environments and their description mentioned toxic attacks. So I thought maybe in the future would be see something like poison damage over time applied. Um, we are. I don't think we are going to apply uh, things like damage over time on the player um, because it's maybe going to be a bit rough because you know we have a game that is based on not that many HP. So if you get like dot damage, you immediately like lose multiple of them. So. Uh, it's probably going to players are probably going to feel that as going to be unfair um, but at the other way around we do have like new stuff with the weapon mods uh, that I've talked earlier and I'm going to show that right when I'm going to finish with the questions which I'm almost done 
So, a new question. Maybe word question, but are there any plans on the crossover stuff? I don't know, maybe Nuclear Throne cameos or Enter the Gungeon, to name some bullet hell similar games. Uh, we already had one cameo with a game, <laughs> which is not an action game at all. And this game is Heave Ho. So uh, I'm going to try to find you a trailer for Heave Ho. And if you don't know the game, it's a very fun game. And every time we play, we have uh, like the biggest of laughs. I'm going to try to put that into the chat, so just heave ho. So go check this out. Uh, it is friends of ours, uh, French developers, uh, who made the game. It's a co-op game and playable up to four, maybe maybe more players. Uh, it's very, very funny. Uh, it's available on PC, Switch and other platforms. And there is a crossover <laughs> with Skullbringer in it because in the latest update that released uh, like a few days ago, uh, there is a, a Kira costume. So you can play as Kira and the costume is very, very silly. <laughs> so if you can un unlock it, it's very funny. And uh, and yeah, it's true, it's true. It's an, it's an official thing. So uh, there is really is like a Skullbringer skin into Heave O. And uh, and if if we are going to make more cameos or crossover, uh, it's a possibility because um, we do talk to other developers a lot, and uh, there is a lot of developers that we love, and there is we, we know that Skullringer may also resonate with their own uh, game, and. Um, it is a possibility. There, I, I, I won't say that there is anything planned for now because it, it wouldn't be true. But um, there are a possibility that this may exist in the future. And we would be open to it, of course. Because we think that it's very cool. Okay. So there is a new question. How was your experience at the start of creating Skullbringer? Like, how did you feel about it and what were the major challenges? Um, it's very funny because at first um, it's a story that I often, often tell because it's so absurd. Um, when we start designing game, uh, we we write two different lists of things. Uh, we write a list of things we would like to try making, or things we would like to see into a game, or maybe things we would like to play. And it can be, for instance, I want to play a fighting game, I want to have, like, I don't know, uh, cucumbers into a game, I want uh, many stuff, and a list of stuff that we don't want. Uh, mostly because uh, stuff we don't want, like maybe game genre that we're not comfortable with, or like we think that maybe this one is going to be too technical and we're not going to be able to tackle it. And and making a platformer was on that list, on the list of things that we didn't wanted to try, because making a platformer, making making a good platformer is very complex because there is a lot of, of invisible tricks that makes it playable, comfortable, like the duration of the jump, the length of a jump, uh, the s every small timing that is involved, and making a very good platformer is very hard. And we, and we believe that uh, it was too much work for us. But why do we have two of this list is that if we get dry on ideas, I mean, if we start prototype a game and we feel like, crap, this is not funny, and we are not going anywhere, what we do is that we put into like a disruptor into our habits, and this disruptor is like grabbing something from the list we don't like and imposing it 
on ourselves and just to check, just to like break our habits and try to bring new ideas into our circle of thoughts. And, and we grab platformers. And so we start like prototyping something that we were not comfortable making at first. And, um, and it was kind of a challenge. And, and at some point it clicked. At some point we were like, yeah, yeah, there may be something. We may be like holding onto something. And uh, so we kept pushing and here goes Scourgebringer. So yeah, so Scourgebringer is born from something we didn't want it to do. <laughs> and it worked, okay. Um, are you planning on changing any enemy health or stats, such as reflected bullet damage? Uh, yes, of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there is a lot of things that presently into the game are pretty much unbalanced and we are aware of it. And of course, we are going to balance this and we are going to keep balancing it, which means that even if the game releases and there are still stuff that we that slips through our attention, we are going to keep being uh, like watching feedbacks and so on. So keep trying to uh, polish stuff. So yeah, most definitely. Uh, we could no oh, evil thing. Really fun game, by the way. Yeah. Cuckoo opus. Cucumbers. I get it. Yeah. Cucumbers are bad. <laughs> Funny story. Yeah. Do you plan to add modifiers to the game to change the rules of the of the, of the of a run? Um, yeah. And I'm going to show that. Now, <laughs> because uh, we seem to have like have, ca have ca uh, caught up like with the chat. So what I'm going to do now, uh, you can still ask questions, but I'm going to try to switch to the game. Okay, uh, here we are. Game. Uh, going to grab a gamepad, but first I'm going to drink a bit, and I hope that you are also all. Hydrated. I'm so ready for this news. Are you? Really? Um, so let's continue. Okay, first things first. Uh, Spoiler alert. So if you are here now and uh, I'm going to show stuff if you don't want to, to see it uh, Just like maybe close your eye. <laughs> I don't want you like to leave the, the stream, but uh, if you can maybe Maybe just like tab to another stuff and just keep the sound but um, I'm going to talk about what we have been adding into the game, what is going to still be added, and what things we've been preparing. Um, so the biggest thing that is going to happen... Uh, so here you have our skill tree, and as you see it, there is like three new skills at the top. So these are the end game skills and there are not skills that are going to bring new abilities to Kira they are a bit different so one of them is truth seeker and so if you already went through the fifth world you know that the last boss of the game is Criterion and so this skill once you get it you denied Criterion's dungeon. You can now access the Chaos Rules by diving into the pool by the tree. What can possibly lie behind? Do you want to see what's in the pool if we dive? Like, should we go through? Show us. <laughs> okay, so you see that, of course, there is that. The blood pool and what if I dash directly into the pool 
and here we go. So this is the post game of the game is it's when you uncover the truth. It's where you uncover the, the truth of the game. And so this is the chaos route. And the chaos route is basically the hard mode of the game. So if you start a run from here, you're going to have like a whole new kind of tree, but these are the roots. And these are not skills. These are not skills, these are not stuff you are going to unlock and like add stuff. But for instance, the main route is this node at the top. It's the truth. So you have two options. Either you make a, a run that ends at the word 5, so once you beat Criterion, it's going to be end of the game. And so it says, Criterion will decide of humanity's fate. You will not reach what's behind its judgment. But what's behind? So what if we activate this? So what's going to happen is that you will challenge Criterion's judgment and reach what lies behind. And it says 6. So basically, this is how you are going to access the six worlds. So this is the post game. So it basically says that you go past the judgment of Criterion. You do not agree with hit like judging the fate of humanity, and you go behind. And you are going to reach a new world with a new boss and new secrets. And this, unfortunately, I can't show to you just yet. Uh, yet again, if you want to see how the sixth world looks and what it's going to bring, uh, you'll have to stay tuned for what IGN is going to show on Saturday. And, and here goes our difficulty challenges. So all of these individual routes is run modifiers to enhance or <laughs> uh, I'd say make your game more difficult. For instance, you, you have one modifiers on enemies. So here goes enemies remains normal. If you activate it on one time, you're going to have enemies and bosses will have 50% more HP. And if you activate it two times, Enemies and bosses will have 100% more HP, will be more aggressive, and will have faster movements. So this is the real deal. <laughs> so if you've been like beating the game uh, in 20 minutes, I fairly believe that activating all the chaos routes is pretty much unbeatable. So we don't expect, we haven't designed the routes to be beatable if you activated them all. But who knows? Who's going to be the first to beat like all the case chaos route? Because you can activate each of them at the same time. So you also have one for max HP. So your maximum HP remains normal. Uh, you will start the game the, with three maximum HP or you will start the ordeal with one maximum HP. There is another one on difficulty. So 50% of the rooms will be more difficult, which means that the patterns of enemy will be more difficult. There are going to be more enemies. And the second layer is going to be all the rooms will be more difficult. Also on the number of rooms, you can have like much longer runs, like realm size remains normal. All realms will have a minimum of 20 rooms and all realms will have a minimum of 25 rooms. And yeah, hello intensity, my old friend. <laughs> and also on blood droplets, you're going to get uh, blood droplets gains, gain remains normal. Uh, you gain 50% less droplets and you gain no droplets at all. Uh, also on else item, like 
50% of health item will be replaced by cucumbers. <laughs> and of course, all of the health items will be replaced by cucumbers. <laughs> no, not the cucumbers, no. <laughs> Get rid of the cucumbers. Of course, those are idols. Cucumber percent. <laughs> uh, and so these are, so all the root nodes uh, from the top are what we call uh, difficulty nodes and the four nodes at the bottom are what we call challenges. So we have one challenge which is the oppression challenge and when you activate it, enemy waves will be triggered as soon as there are three enemies left. So if you played the game, you know that you have to uh, entirely clean an enemy wave for the next one to come. And this, this challenge makes the next wave to pop earlier. So it's going to be rough. Uh, this one is on traps. So if you don't like poisonous gases from World Tree, you're going to hate this one. Because it makes every traps inflict 4 points of damage. Uh, it's not 4% points, it, it's, it's 4 points of damage. So each poison clouds, uh, each spikes, uh, each everything is going to be like 4 hit points right away. A jumping challenge. So the challenge is that when there are enemy around, you lose 1 HP every time you stay more than 1 second on ground. So it's basically floor is lava to the next level. And the last one, this one is going also going to be very rough. Escalation challenge. After each completed realm, you will lose one more HP per hit. Which means that if you get it on world one, you lose one HP. If you get it on world two, you, get, you lose two HP and so on uh, up to work six <laughs> where if you get it you're going to lose six hp and and so the roots it puts together what we call the chaos score so if you look on the top right of the screen there is like 17 out of 17 which means that i have activated all the 17 roots and this count to your chaos score if you manage to beat the game and so you have like a record of what was your best chaos score and yeah so i believe there was a few questions while i was showing all of this but uh, yeah will there be more of these modifier lasers as the idea is that we can expand this um there is we can like add more uh, nodes like adding this is basically a, frame, a framework for something we can extend like we can do a, a lot of thing with this saltmeister is the steel bastion gonna get a unique mechanic like the gas in the wasted pit um what we intended as a unique mechanic of uh, the steel bastion was everything that is um, the jellyfish and with the very, with the very slow bullets. Uh, it's, it's not quite trivial because it doesn't come from the environment itself. But uh, we intended to make uh, the barrage of bullets that are like blocking the stuff. And yeah. And all the roots are activated, but if I go <laughs> into a run with one max HP and nothing else, I'm probably going to get like very wrecked. But uh, but I want to show you some stuff. I'm going to just like do my noob here and just going to go into a run because I want to show you the other kind of new stuff um, so many new stuff first if you look on the top left um, you see that there is now shields on the HP 
So these are things that you are going to be very familiar with if you already played like most other roguelike games is that now you are going to be able to loot shields and shields are going to avoid you from losing HP. So pretty standard stuff but we believe that it was still something that was kind of lacking to the game. Um, now on to weapons. So first we changed how weapons reload. Well, not quite changed, it's still the same. But we've put a limit to it. Like if I fire a few bullets, you can see that on the energy reload bar on the left, right next to uh, the ammunition, there is a new little like bar, orange bar that is moving up as I fire bullets. So this is basically what we call the limiter. And this is a new game mechanic just to avoid having gun to be too overpowered. Because um, what we believe was too overpowered before is that you could basically have like two full magazines of your weapon to be charged in advance. And so we added this um, just to avoid having a magazine ahead and like being able to like empty it entirely on midi bosses and so on. So this is something we added just to have more of an incentive to uh, go fighting, to reload your weapon. And you can also see that just below the weapon icon, there is like three new like icons or slots. And these are going to be weapon modifiers. And I can maybe show you if I go to the shop right here. So this is one of the new shop. So this is a new NPC. It doesn't have like lines uh, written in it yet. Uh, all the dialogues are written. They are not yet integrated into the game, but everything is there. So now weapon come with mud slots. So for instance, these machine guns has an empty slot. And if I buy this machine gun, so now I have like a red icon next to my weapon. So this means that I have an empty slot. And if I go into the map screen, I have a recap of what I have equipped. So it's an empty slot. And I can also now find and buy weapon mods that I can equip to a weapon if I have three slots. So for instance, bouncing mod is going to make bullet to bounce on walls. And the banishing mod is going to make more damage to devil enemies. So unfortunately I can't buy a mod for now, but I am willing to get this bouncing mod for my machine gun. So what I am going to do is to play a bit until I have the money. So here, a new blessing. Uh, do I have one that's going to make me more but, well, more droplets, no. Okay, well, let's go for this one. Okay, the, ch the challenge room. So the, are we going to do the challenge room and I'm going to have like Anna's blood droplet to uh, to make this. So we are also going to change a bit the challenge rooms because they are, we believe, not as challenging yet. They could be more challenging. And there are some people complaining that um, the hard rooms are more difficult than the actual challenge rooms, which is an issue in itself. So we are going to try to uh, like change a bit how the challenge room works. We are going to make them more difficult. So here goes a lot of droplets, um, more enhancements, 
did I drop any... No. So I didn't drop any mods, but if I go there and I buy back this mod, so now my machine gun gets a bouncing mod. So, so this is basically the new gun system. So, uh, and you can like have up to three mods, but like for now, like my machine gun now is maxed out. So I can do much more with this weapon. And if you notice, there is also now little stars above item names. And this is basically a new uh, rarity system into the game. So the more you advance into a run, the more you're going to get rarer items. So if you want to get like a weapon that has like a lot of uh mod slots and you're going to have like to change weapon more often because from the very beginning of the game you can't really get a three mod weapon or unless if you are very lucky or if you use a reroll so you can smash item to uh to get more stuff and so yes yeah, this is one of the rhythms that we've been making into the game so uh and hello to uh, people who are, who are joining now, so uh, hello Platypus, and yeah. Rafaman was still there. Grid looks different. It's not grid. <laughs> it's a new NPC. So uh, it is called the twins, but there, it is not its real name. It's, the, it's not the names that you are going to have you in the game. This is the names that we work with internally. But uh, there are going to be two new shops into the game. Uh, there is this shop, with the, which is the weapon shop. And there is another shop, which is the cursed shop. shop and in which you are going to find uh, only good item, very good item. But you are going to uh, have to pay them with your own HP. So it's basically a, tra a trade-off. So you get one excellent item, but you'll have to uh, to pay them with blood. And so each new shop is going to have its own NPC, and all of these NPC are new acolytes of greed. So they are working for grid. And you are going to be able to know more about them and about their relationship with grid. So I'm going to try to clean... Okay, this is something that we haven't figured out yet. So um, I've just dropped a weapon mod, but when I tried to grab it, it turned into a blood droplets. So this is basically because my weapon is already full with mods. And we still don't know how to tackle this specific case. And this is still something that we are currently tricking. Okay, that was swift. <laughs> and... Did you see what I see? There is a room that just appeared on my left. So what happened is that we now have secret rooms. And in secret rooms, you are going to have good drops. And here we are. So this room was directly here. And so to open up uh, secret rooms, you will have to break walls. And by breaking walls, I mean firing on it. So if you don't have like remaining ammunition, you won't be able to, uh, to break walls. So you can't like explore a level and fire on every walls because you would be very quickly out of ammunition. So it's basically like a kind of an exploration and on the opportunity of what you're going to do. Can Fury break walls? Yeah, Fury has a 100% chance 
of breaking walls. But as you may know it, you can't trigger a fury if there is no enemies around. So you can't, for instance, have a fury and, and trigger it in an empty room. It, it won't work. And yeah, shields. <laughs> Okay, we can, uh, we should be able to go directly to the boss. But I'm just going to check if there is grid. There is grid around. It should be around. And so secret rooms, there is going to be one to two secret rooms per world. And of course there is going to be like blessings that are going to allow you to maybe see where secret rooms are so i'm playing pretty pretty badly <laughs> i i'm i'm really not uh, a professional streamer so like Playing and speaking and reading a chat is not something I am very used to. Can you only break walls after a room is cleared of enemy? No, 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 no. You can you can break walls um, when enemies are there. You can also break walls by throwing enemies at them, like smashing them onto a wall. If there was a secret room, it's going to like break the walls instantly. So here is a friend grid, or not so friendly. Okay, here a new gun. So the double gun is a new weapon, and uh, it's a new gun, basically. And HP, yes, I want HP back. And I want, ah, uh, it's too expensive now. Um, I'm going to go for the full clear to get the bonus. And here we go. And HP, HP. And I'm just going to go for the body builder and I'm going to stop there. So as you see, the boss is getting a new effect on him, and I can't show it to you, but basically my gun has tranquilizing, and tranquilizing, I'm going to show you once I have, so tranquilizing, just look at the speed of the, ah, uh, too late. But what the tranquilizing mode does is that when enemies are Tranquilly Zed. Every bullet that they shot are slowed down. So this is like some sort of crowd control mode. So I've dropped a new banishing mode and I've dropped an unsettling mode. So the unsettling mode, I'm going to grab it. And the unsettling mode, I'm just going to empty this and get this. What it does. So as you see in my magazine, I have like one ammunition that seems to be odd. that has like an exclamation mark. And if I just bring the map, so you can see that the unsettling mode, what it does is that some bullets will do 300% damage, but most will do 50%. So it means that your gun is basically stronger, but it gets some weaker bullets and you can use this like for instance, if you have a gun or if you have a shotgun or maybe a rocket launcher, you can use this to like keep your strongest bullets and for very precise moments. And, and as you see also, the portal now turned green. Uh, it turned green because we are doing a chaos run. And if you do a chaos run, the portals turn green because it means that you are going to later access the six worlds. And, and yeah, yeah. 
wait, <laughs> why is the portal that color? So, yeah, what I said is that it has to do with the new mod, which is the post game. Once you've beat the last boss of the game, you're going to get access to this. So, this is the Chaos Roots, and this is where you're going to be able to enable um, Red Modifius. And for instance, accessing the Sixth World is going to go through only there. So you're going to have like to activate this node, and and you can, for instance, like you can make a Chaos Run without going for the Sixth World. So if you feel like it, you can end your run after Criterion, and you can already try to make like a Chaos Run with only Criterion as your last boss. But if you're brave enough, you can go into the sixth world and uh, trying to beat the true final boss or the true final bosses because there are multiple of them. And, and I believe there are going to be surprises regarding what's going to lie behind. And green for staying shield, bro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Green is the color of shielding, of course, and yeah, making an hard mode for it's forcibly going to get green. Ah, and the rock justice around. <laughs> How do you keep making this game better? What is this magic? And yeah, and you and me, we need to talk because uh, I would like to. Uh, to give you access to this build for for next Sunday. So uh, so if you haven't seen the schedule on the Discord yet, um, we have Rock Justice here in the chat uh, with a French uh, streamer who mainly focus on rock games and uh, who's doing very cool stuff and uh, and it's been kind enough to accept to uh, do a featured screen a stream so uh, he's going to do an official Scorchbringer stream on Sunday uh, evening I believe and um, and what I would like is that uh, I'm going to try to give access to uh, Rock Justice uh, to this build of the game so there's going to be all the revamp of the weapons there's going to be the secret rooms and there is going to be um, the chaos words in there, so I hope so. And so, well, that's pretty much what I can show you today. And um, going to check see if there is still a few questions in the chat. So I'm going to go back uh, in the history. Is it possible to constantly go up in the chaos world since the gravity seems to be near zero? Um, if you go up, you go back to the tree, but you can go down. <laughs> and it's pretty much like the tree, so it's like a strange world. Yes, you, you the, the world loops, it's like a 2, 2D dimension. But if you like to sink, you can. But uh, for now, they, there is no limit. But we are may maybe going to put a limit because if people get lost, it's going to be weird. And yeah, 17 Chaos Roots. Quite honestly, I do believe that making a run with 17 Chaos Roots is impossible. Because it's basically a know it run. A know it run in hard mode and I do think that the the last bosses, the, the, the hidden bosses are going to be extremely difficult if you can't rely on like at least a few HP. And um, but yeah, I I'm really looking forward. I'm really really curious to see if there is anyone who's ever going to be able to beat like a 17 chaos roots. Run. What am I supposed to do now? <laughs> I cannot wait. 
<laughs> yeah, us too. We're really looking forward to uh, to to uh, to finish the game. Well, yeah, yeah. We don't have much to still to do. Uh, the sixth world is already fully done. Uh, Florian is currently finishing the very last boss that is missing into the game. Um, it's already f almost finished. There is very few stuff to do. Uh, I, I still have to integrate the new narrative design because we have Pia, the narrative designer in the game, who delivered the final version of the script. And I still have to integrate everything into the game. She made very cool stuff. She uh, entirely remade um, the computer logs. So uh, here, for instance, you have the expedition logs. So all of these have been rewritten. So there is new stories. There is going to be more stories. And they are more tightly connected together. So they, they tell something. They tell a, a story. Um, all the dialogues of the NPCs have been also rewritten. There is there are going to be more dialogues to each of them. There is also new NPCs. They are going to some like react to each other. Like if you talk to Grid, uh, the other merchant will know that you have to talk to Grid. So they are going to uh, like throw some lines regarding this and so on. Um, are we having more cool cutscenes? I really like the ones at the beginning, but you kind of only see them once. Um, not really. There is going to be the endings. There is going to be three different endings, which are going to be kind in the in the same mood of the introduction, and uh, it will depends on if you beat the game only with Criterion as your final boss. Or if you go into the sixth world, and in the sixth world you're going to have like another set of choice. Uh, good luck on the full release of Tidus. Oh, that's very cool. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, that means a lot because uh, if you don't know who Team D13 is and who Ark of Dream is, uh, Ark of Dream. Ah, sorry, <laughs> Ark of Dream is. Um, composer and sound designer on the game that is called Monolith and Monolith is a game that has been quite influential in the making of Skullbringer and it's an excellent roguelike game a very excellent roguelike game because it is very well scoped and everything just clicks together so nicely so uh, just going to give you uh, a shout out to the game, just going to alt tab and no, not monolith games, monolith game. So just so shout out to monolith, uh, check it out on Steam, and uh, it's a very cool game and made by a very group of fine folks. And yeah, so question, questions. Saltmeister, are bosses affected by hard mode modifiers? Yes, they do. They do have. Uh, I'm going to try to show you because. So. So the one that affects bosses and enemies is this one. So enemies and bosses will have 100 more percent HP, will be more aggressive, and will have faster movements. So this also affects bosses. What happens is that bosses are basically faster. Uh, their attacks are not faster. Uh, the bullets are not going to be faster. But the boss, the boss is going to be way faster. It's going to like move around way faster. It's going to like make combos way more rapidly and so on. Okay, I'm going to roll back into the chat. See, is Kira's hair inspired by your beard? <laughs> uh, I, I, I wish I would have like a, a beard so magnificent, <laughs> but uh, it's not the case. But um, no, the hair of Kira. Uh, how is it? How did we? How did, did we came 
with it. So the story behind the hair of Kira is that um, we wanted to have something dynamic into the game. I'm just going to launch the game just to show you what I mean. So when we started designing the game, we knew that the main character would be very small on screen. So it's barely a few pixels. And um, with this little, with this few pixels, it's pretty hard to imply movement and especially rapid movement. So Florian came up with the idea of having a very flowing hairs so that when she moves we can do a lot of stuff with her hair to uh, like having trails and so on and it's basically something that has been think as like a visual cue to imply more movement and to smooth out animations so that's basically the the, the story behind Kira's hair. <laughs> okay, good questions. Uh, color portals. Do bosses change at all in the art bottle? Questions, I got it. Uh, can we make walls? Can you find secret rooms if you can? Can you? Okay, I've shown one. Curse. Okay, so I guess I've got all your questions, I believe. If there is any question I've missed, uh, please do feel free to repost it. I'm going to just stay a few more minutes around just to wrap up things. But, uh, but I basically think that I've shown to you everything I wanted to show you and I've answered all the questions I could maybe a bit more. Um, the only thing I can show you is the sixth world and I wish I could. But um, unfortunately, I can't. And but I will be able. We will be able to show you this uh, maybe by next week. But if you want to have like the exclusive look of it, please go check uh, the IGN stream on Saturday. So you're going to have like a whole new trailer of the game with a sneak peek to uh, what's to come. So, to be honest, you've covered everything. Cool. <laughs> Will there be more shops in the future, like a food shop? Um, I don't know. We need some things that we haven't think about yet. So, let's be honest. <laughs> we don't know. So, looking forward to Saturday for more previews. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Really looking forward to it too. And fair. <laughs> going to switch back to my full camera. Ooh. Okay, maybe a little easter egg. How does the little bell sound like near the water? Ah. <laughs> and we do have uh, in disguise. <laughs> Kisa, Kisa Kulm. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> So as you can see, there is like Kisa in the chat, who is... is can, can I say it? Or not? No? <laughs> just just let me know, or if you prefer to... Uh, sure, okay, cool. So uh, Kisa in the chat is actually our very Jonas Turner. So <laughs> composer and sound designer on Scourgebringer. And, uh, and he's been crazy enough to design a unique sound for each of the bells on the shimming tree so each of them has a unique sound and it's basically Yunas playing with his set of clinging things <laughs> and they and they also have different sounds they have like a small effect to them depending on if you hit them with a dash or with a smash or just touching them it's a different sound and there is one little one which is kind of peculiar is this one it dings I'm going to remove the music just so you can hear it 
and put the sound. So just hear it. It dings. But what was that? Can we do it again? Oh! <laughs> so that's it. That's that's the kind of of little things that Yunas actually hid into the game. <laughs> And oh, another thing, because there is a quite unknown fact about the main menu of the game. Because Yunas also put a lot of work into the making of this menu. And it's and it's really crazy. And uh, in fact, the music that you are hearing right now is entirely procedural. And in fact, it's a set of multiple layers and multiple instruments. And each time you hear the theme of the game, it's going to be different. So if I just keep playing it, you can basically listen to it and it never be the same. You're never going to have the same loop. And, and this is all like the crazy work of Jonas and it, it's basically one of the first thing he did for the game and he was like, well, let's do uh, procedural music and put layers and uh, and I was like, what? Are you sure? <laughs> and it's and it's really, really awesome and, uh, and it's even more awesome than that because depending on which menu you select the music changes again like, just listen to how the music is going to change when I go to the settings. Just... And now you hear other kind of instruments, and it, get, it becomes more electronic. And, and it's different. It's something else. And you have other kind of patterns that goes on. And so, and you have like one of them for each menu. So if I go into the credits, there's going to be another one. So you are all the talking heads. So this is something that Yunas likes quite a lot is what he calls the talking heads and it's basically just like a synth effect and it makes you think that there are like people talking and he thought it would be something fun to do on the credit screen because there is like lots of names. And of course there is one final variation of the music if you highlight the exit button. So the music goes into this very hairy kind of mood. And yeah, so yeah, so this is basically the work of Jonas. <laughs> and working with him is basically like this every day because he, he just come up with ideas and things it would like it trying and <laughs> every time we're like are you sure you're going to you want to try that because it takes time and uh, yeah it's we don't want to put too much work on you and he's like hmm, like to try <laughs> so it's cool <laughs> and yeah and he, he did some 
pretty awesome tracks for uh, the last levels and for all. He go, he, he went fully uh, off track for the final boss. Like it's like one of the most, it's it's the most savage track from the game, and I personally like it a lot. And uh, yeah, but speaking speaking of soundtrack, the soundtrack is pretty much uh, done. It just need like to have like a few more tweaks and to go into masterings, but it's pretty much pretty much there, and it's going to hopefully be available separately from the game. And it's also the only person who head bangs with his headphones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So if you go onto the Twitter of uh, Yunas, I'm going to link it to you in the chat if I find. Kisakolm. So, this is a Twitter account of Jonas, and uh, you can check from there his game he worked uh, on with his colleagues, which is called Tormentor Cross Punisher. So, if you like action game and heavy music, it's like the Geometry Wars of. I don't want to... How, how can I describe Tormentor Exponential? It's like the metal version of Geometry Wars. I don't know, <laughs> but it's very, it's very cool. <laughs> and, and of course, he often shares stuff from Skullringer and also from other games he worked on or for in his own jams. And he has the habits of like jamming with his head with his phones as he films <laughs> and it just puts you into the mood yeah twin stick arcade geometry walls mixed with tanpai kaiki tree i don't know tanpan kaiki tree i'm going to look that up i don't know what it is but yeah and banging camera so Oh, you worked at the very end on Carrions. I didn't know. But cool, that's cool. And, um, yeah, so if you don't have any more questions, uh, I don't have any more stuff to show. So I'm basically dry on info <laughs> right now. And uh, I hope it was cool for you. It was very cool from all of you to drop by i hope you've had a good time and i hope you had questions and of course yeah one last questions i would be up to it yeah of course please, please and uh yeah it was very awesome it was really cool and uh, i'm glad that you've been enjoying it and uh very nice of you to have been dropped by very cool very cool and so the last question are you gonna add more mini bosses? By the way, great show, thanks. Uh, the answer is definitely a big yes. Uh, we already have new mini bosses designed in, into the game, and our goal is to have something like three different mini bosses per world for the full release. And and the structure of the game is going to change a bit, also like the later world will require to beat more than one mini bosses to access the boss so that's the kind of structure that strictly comes from monoliths for instance and uh, we believe that it works quite well as a progression and to the difference that the sixth world is not going to have mini bosses but when you figure out why <laughs> you'd be okay <laughs> we'll see so yeah thank you very much and uh really thank you um looking forward to releasing this game to announcing the release date with ign on saturday and and yeah i believe we are going to uh, be talking again really soon because the game is out soon enough and uh, it may be only the beginning. <laughs> we have like lots of ideas to keep expanding the game but we believe that the 1.0 is going to be like a huge milestone 
and we hope that you're going to enjoy it. So, see you around, see you uh, on the Discord. I'm just going to uh, drop uh, the address of the Discord. And here you go. And, and yeah, see you around and uh, yeah, stay fresh, stay hydrated and uh, very cool, very cool. Bye bye, have a good day, have a good night and uh, see you very, very soon. And of course, if you watch this on a replay or if you have more questions, we'll be of course glad to answer them on the Discord or on Twitter. See you.